Greetings, everybody. Welcome back. Apologies for the long delay in getting any content up, but I've had some health issues over the past few months, but doing a lot better now, and it's time to get back into things. I've got a lot to tell you about, so let's get right into it. I've made some significant progress on the Fenwick Williams cat boat, and rather than mix it with this episode and make this one too long, I'm going to release a special episode just with that content this Sunday. I've also got another special episode I'm going to be releasing in about a week's time. It's a nautical theme project, thanking those who are serving our nation. But in the meantime, let's get back to the Harris Off Eagle. Okay, real quick side note here. I've been asked a couple of times why I pronounce it Harris Off, especially when in earlier episodes I pronounced it Harris Off, like you hear most people pronounce it. Well, I cannot remember where I heard it. It was either a podcast, it was a documentary, maybe a YouTube video. I cannot for the life of me remember where I saw it. But Halsey was giving a speech saying that his name, the family name, was properly pronounced Harrisoff. Now Halsey then relayed that he had made a phone call to a Navy Admiral, I guess in response to a contract or something that he was working on, and introduced himself as Halsey Harrisoff. At which point the Admiral said, who? Halsey then reintroduced himself, giving him the family lineage so he knew who he was talking to. Say it! Say it! And the Admiral said, oh you mean Harrisoff. I guess that was kind of the railroad tie that broke the camel's back, and Halsey said he stopped correcting people at that point. But hey, if the man would like his name pronounced Harrisoff, I'm more than happy to oblige. So that's the story behind that. So now, back to the Harrisoff Eagle. You might remember that when I first got this boat, I thought the cockpit sole was actually in pretty good shape. But as it turns out, it is going to need some reinforcement. Now I could go back and do like I did with my America Cat boat and completely replace the cockpit sole. But that's not really necessary in this case. The envelope for the eel is actually in pretty good shape. So in this case, I'm just going to reinforce it. I'll start off with a special layer of fiberglass, and then eventually on top of that will be some wood decking and a grate. All of which will reinforce the cockpit sole without having to tear the entire thing apart and rebuild it. But there is one thing that kind of stands in the way. One project I want or need to complete before I really do anything else on this boat. And that is the stuck centerboard. When I first picked up the boat, I really didn't have time to look it over much. But looking inside the cabin, I could see that someone removed the centerboard trunk cover and cut a slot in the top of the fiberglass centerboard trunk. I couldn't figure out why you'd want to do that. And uh, I found out. The reason is that centerboard is jammed in there tight and somebody else came to the conclusion they were going to need to open that thing up in order to get it out. Now at first I tried pounding on that thing with a sledgehammer and it would not budge so much as a millimeter. I needed to get a little better look at what was going on down there so I stuck one of those little boroscope cameras down there and I saw that really most of the board although it had significant rust to it didn't seem to be pushing up against the centerboard trunk. Although along the bottom of the centerboard, where it folds into the boat into the back, underneath the cockpit sole, the centerboard went from a solid piece of steel into a solid mass of scaled rust. Now fresh water will do this, but salt water is even worse, where the rust occurs and comes off in layers. Once one layer forms, another layer underneath it forms and pushes it out until it pushes against the centerboard trunk, and it really doesn't take very much force to make it almost impossible to get that thing down. That steel centerboard resides in a fiberglass trunk. There's a horizontal pin near the front that allows the whole thing to hinge up and down into the water and then back up into the trunk. In its retracted position, the centerboard is kind of oriented about like this. Now this area on the bottom of the centerboard, or the back of it once it's retracted back up into the centerboard trunk, is generally where most of the scaling and rust happens. If you're having this problem of a stuck centerboard and you are able to get it down with what I'm about to show you, you might be able to use that centerboard again if you chip off or grind off that rust and scaling and get it back to pretty clean bare metal. At that point I would definitely have it covered with some sort of epoxy or some sort of a covering to prevent water from getting in direct contact with that metal. Otherwise it's going to rust and scale and jam in there again. Regardless of how hard I hit that thing with blunt force, it simply wasn't going to move until I could get some of that scaled rust out of there. So I did some research and found this product, Evapa Rust. It seemed to have pretty good reviews. There were several YouTube videos on how well it worked. So I thought I'd give it a try. But the centerboard was going to need to soak in it a while for this thing to do its chemical process on it. 
For that, I needed to make the centerboard trunk watertight so we could hold the solution. After a rather expensive roll of waterproof Gorilla Tape, and even adding a second plastic barrier on top just in case, with more copious amounts of waterproof Gorilla Tape, it was time to test it out to see if it would hold water. And unfortunately, it didn't. Despite my best efforts to plug every leak, it just would not hold water long enough for the solution to do its job. So I never actually got to try that product. It was time to move on to plan B. I got three of the longest reciprocating metal cutting saw blades I could find, which were about 12 inches apiece. Unfortunately, that just wasn't long enough to do what I needed. So I ground off the paint on the ends exposing bare metal, welded them together, and came up with the mother of all Franken blades. Little goofy looking, but in the words of the great philosopher Mediocrates, eh, good enough. It certainly looked like something red green would make or something whipped up by MacGyver, but time to see if this thing actually works. And it indeed did work. I unfortunately had only one camera to show what was going on, but the chunks of rust that were falling out of the bottom of the centerboard trunk were pretty impressive. After about 20 or 30 minutes, it was time to see if I could finally get this thing loose. I used a piece of black pipe and a pile driver, and behold, the centerboard started to drop. At first, just a few inches, but another few minutes with the reciprocating saw, and it started to come out even easier. Now unfortunately, I don't have this boat high enough off the ground to get that centerboard out of there in one piece, so it's going to have to come off in sections. I got the first part down as far as I could until it hit the ground, and then used a plasma torch to cut the piece off. Now I know not everybody has a plasma torch, and you could very well do this with a grinding wheel. Unfortunately, just as I got to the point where the first section was going to fall off, the camera battery died. Of course. But trust me, it did come off. After that, I lowered it down a little bit more, which required very little effort. Began to cut the next piece off, and as you can see, the rest came out one piece at a time. And there it is in three pieces, but it's out. I really do think that thing's been stuck in there for almost 20 years. And you can see the lower part of the centerboard has an awful lot of rust and scaling on it. Now that I finally have that centerboard out, I feel a lot more comfortable about moving on to other projects like reinforcing the cockpit sole and starting to do some painting inside the cabin. Now, as I said before, instead of redoing the entire cockpit sole, I'm just going to reinforce it. So I'm going to reinforce the central area of the cockpit with some fiberglass and epoxy. I have some other things I'm going to do for the sides of the cockpit where the benches are going to be. So my first step was to route out any cracks or holes and fill it with total boat fairing compound so I could get the cockpit sole as watertight an envelope as I could possibly make it. After that, take some coarse sandpaper on the random orbital sander and rough up the surface. That helps get any dirt out and also makes a much better mechanical bonding surface for the epoxy and fiberglass to bond to. After that, time for a good power wash. And just a side note, I think this power washer is one of my essential tools. I use it all the time, and it certainly makes restoring and working on these boats a lot easier. Once that surface was dry, I used some Total Boat Surface Prep to get it ready for the epoxy. Mixed some up and poured it out. Spread it out with a little chip brush. Now the epoxy that I'm using for this is a little different from what I normally use. In this case, I'm using a 2 to 1 ratio epoxy. Now one of the reasons for that is it offers a little bit of mechanical flexibility. Even though I want to strengthen this cockpit sole, it's still going to need a little bit of give to it. And the fiberglass that I'm using here is something a little unusual for me too. It's a dual weave fiberglass. As you can see on the top, it's got a very tight crosshatch weave. While underneath being held in place by that blue tape you see on either side is an adhered chop strand layer. 
once that's saturated with epoxy, it is going to make an extremely strong surface. Now that the epoxy is beginning to set up, it's time to put the fiberglass mat down. Just a very small cutout in the front for where the cockpit drain goes. Just lay it down and begin to smooth it out a little bit. And then add a lot more epoxy. Now my camera died while I was doing this, so I don't have any footage of it. But you want to add enough epoxy to make that fiberglass mat essentially translucent or transparent. Use a chip brush or special tools to get all of the air bubbles out of it and let it cure. Now it's time to finally paint the interior of the cabin. I've taped off everything that needs to be masked. I sanded down the surfaces with some coarse sandpaper and some acetone and surface prep to get it ready for paint. And for this, I'm going to use Total Boat's Total Protect Barrier Coat paint. Now you've seen me use this before for a barrier coat for the Eagle. This particular kit is white instead of gray and it can be used as a great epoxy based paint. I'll include a link below to the video where I extensively use this product, how to work with it, where to find the data sheets, some basic safety measures, and application. Although there is one thing I want to emphasize here and that is do not use this product without a respirator and new cartridges that are designed to be used with such a product. In this case, since there's so many curved surfaces, a roller really wouldn't work in here, so I'm going to spray it in. And you can see an aerosol product like this is going to create a really big cloud. You do not want to be breathing that in without a respirator. But the results are extraordinary. It's almost like a brand new coat of gel coat. Yeah, sorry about the view there. Additionally, then I rolled on some of that same epoxy barrier coat onto the cockpit sole and the brand new fiberglass that I put down. That'll help seal that up as well. Now after that all cures for a few days, there's more to do on that boat, but we're going to cover that in another episode. I think that's about all for today for this one. And keep in mind I have another episode I want to release this weekend that's going to cover some of the work I've been doing on the Fenwick Williams Cat Boat, as well as a few other things coming down the road here real quick. Remember, keep calm and work on your boat.